Hi, I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber, coming to you on YouTube Live and coming to you on Clubhouse. So this is really unique. We are trying something different today. So if you're catching this live, whether you're in Clubhouse or whether on YouTube, whether you're on YouTube, great to have you in here. Uh, we are really looking forward to this. Maybe. Uh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to do some different things, and I lost this camera over here, y'all. This camera's not up. So what we're trying to do is trying to do some new things. We've got the whole marketing crew involved here trying to see what we can do different, see what we can do unique. And what we're doing is we do this every week. So if you're catching this live, man, this is going to be fun. We're going to do q and I'll jump into the chat. If you've got questions for me, please jump into the live stream on YouTube, go up to the top, there's a form, and what that is is a link to a Google Doc where you can fill it out, ask some questions, and do some different things. So looking forward to hearing what you have to say. If you're catching this on a replay on YouTube, if you want to, you may hang around, because what we do, we have people that want to get into the trades, people that are in the trades that want to get better, and we have people that are in the trades that maybe want to start their own business. The cool thing about that is we talk about it, not just here, but we also have people that get into the comments that actually have input. So it, it really is kind of cool. And the neat thing about it is we get good feedback from all kinds of different people. So what we're doing is basically it's Q&A. I want to talk to you about plumbing. I want to find out what you think about yourself and the trades, how it affects others and how it affects the world, but also I want to try to be a role model. And there's other people in here that I think are doing great. And they're, they're doing great in this trade. And what that does is it allows other people to, to answer questions in here, questions that I bring up or questions in the chat. And, man, it's really a lot of fun. So we're having fun today. So I am literally going to look over here. I have already got a lot of questions in the form. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and jump in one of these. I tell you what, actually, I'm going to look in the chat, see who else in here. We have Neil, the Urban Explorer in here. Great to have you, brother. Uh, Julie Wakefield, the queen of moderators. I love it. And yeah, we got, we got a lot of people in here already. This is pretty cool. So those of y'all in Clubhouse, what we do over here is we do this every week. We jump in at 3 o'clock Central Standard Time. We go till 5.30. I started a YouTube channel. I, I've, I started it a while back, but really about almost three years ago, about two years and eight months, I walked in to social media marketing world, and I learned about social media. I learned about the power of social media and how I could use that to grow my business, to grow revenue and how I could grow as a tradesman with integrity and use the power of social media to help grow my business. So it's been really good for me, and, and I do. I enjoy it, but the cool thing about it is now I get to help other people. So I am currently helping people that want to get into the trades, people that are in the trades that want to get better, maybe trades people that want to start their own business. They're in the trades. They're doing things great. And they have an opportunity to, to open their own company if they know the right things to do. And then the last one is I have a lot of trades people that are already business owners that want to learn to do the things I did because either the media, the marketing, the things that they're doing aren't working. The people that are doing it, it's not working right. Or, bad enough, they're spending a lot of money and they're slowly going out of business. So I teach them to use social media. And the neat thing about it is it, it works. It really does. So I'm going to jump into the questions real quick over in the forum. First question is from Eric Boy. Eric Boy says, hey, Roger, just want to say thanks for your videos. You do. Uh, you have turned my world upside down in regards to the trades and work ethic in general. I want to get into the trades and was wondering, is it better to go to a vocational school or trade school first, then find a job? Or is it better to go into a job and learn as I go? 
I currently want to get into HVAC, but I have zero knowledge or experience. Thanks for the advice, Eric Boy. And this is good because I, I get this often. Literally, it, it, it doesn't matter which way you go in. Now, I believe in the union training pro program. I believe in PHCC's training program. And, and there's other training programs out there that I think are good. If you have that kind of money, you have that kind of time, you have that kind of desire, that, that's a good way to go. If not, literally, you can go find a job tomorrow as a plumber and you're going to start learning. Now, the cool thing about it is that whatever it is you're learning, whether it's from a, sorry guys, we're, we're having technical difficulties, we're working on it, we, we lost a camera, so we want to make sure that we get that up and taken care of, and that's what they're doing. So if you see a little jiggling, it's because I've got three people crawling around back here trying to make things happen. But the cool thing about it is literally me. When I came up in the trades, when I first got in the trades, it was 1980. And what I did is I went to work for a plumbing company. And that's where I learned plumbing. I actually worked with a plumber that was a friend's brother. And I started learning plumbing. The cool thing is I learned enough about it to learn that I really did like it. Matter of fact, man, I loved it. I loved being in the trades. I loved doing stuff like that. And it was just really, really cool. So the fun thing is I found something that I enjoyed. Now, I had been in other parts of the trades before. I had been in as a laborer. I had actually been in as a, just a job site cleaner. I mean, literally, I ran around the job site and picked up lumber, made sure it all got put in the right spot, made sure scrap lumber got thrown away, different things like that. But I enjoyed being on a construction site. So what I did is literally I got in and I learned how to do different things. But once I started plumbing, I realized I really do love that. I love being a plumber. I, I, I love the system. I love the process and all the cool things about it. We need to work on the focus. So the neat thing about it is along the way, I figured out not only how to do that well, but also how to come in and teach it to other people. Now, whenever I got in the union, I was pretty good at it. So I became an instructor and I taught other people getting into plumbing, pipe fitting, and welding, how to come in and actually grow through the trades. And I really did enjoy that. So I decided I wanted to get into plumbing and help people do that. So what I will tell you is you can go to a vocational trade school, which is going to be fine. What I would do first is go to my YouTube channel, go in the top right corner, and click on the plum study. We've got a free mini course that literally helps you find out what kind of plumber you want to be. Now, if you already know what kind of plumber you want to be, service or new construction, residential or commercial, uh, union or non-union, sorry, with everything going on, I'm, I'm kind of distracted, uh, union or non-union, whatever it is, figure out what kind of plumber you want to be, and, and you're going to do better in the trade because you're not going to come in and, and get a job as a service plumber and, and realize, hey, I hate service plumbing. It's not good for me. Or you're going to end up doing service work and realize you'd really rather do construction. So a lot of different ways to look at it, a lot of different things to figure out, but that's what I created that mini course for. It's really going to be up to you, but once you find out, Eric Boy, and I know this is a long answer, but to find out, once you find out what kind of plumber you want to be, if you want to do commercial, the union is probably going to be really good for you even PHCC, but if you want to do residential, maybe going to work for a company that does residential service or new construction might be good and help you grow there. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Need, needed to hydrate. And Miss Amarlina would pat me on the back for that. There you go. Neil, thank you so much. You put a link in there to the Plum Study course, and that'll at least help you Figure it all out. Cool thing is, though, there's so many different ways to learn. And once you, once you figure out what kind of plumber you want to be, it will help you a lot. Going into the next question in the forum, Sebastian says, 
I'm planning to be a plumber in LA. Another third is a placement test. And I was wondering if you know what else is on it besides the math to study and be more prepared when I decide to take it. <coughs> now, the placement test really, that they want to learn about your character. What kind of person are you? What kind of person do you want to be? And I've got videos in my channel, so I'm not going to go real deep on it. But, but the thing that I will tell you is, are you a kind of person that's going to help the union? Can you come in and help the union look better? Can you help the union do better? Can you come in and learn to be a good union member, to work with other people, to be a team player? So a lot of different ways to look at it and figure out what you want to do. But at the end of the day, man, it's just it. they want to know, do you, do you know anything about math? Are you mechanically inclined? Uh, and you don't have to be a mathematician. I, I mean, look, I'm not amazing at math, but, but I got to tell you, it's, uh, it's something that you need to know, but don't let the, the fact that maybe you don't know math perfectly keep you out of it. So Nick Kurdzik says, love your channel. I appreciate it, brother. Uh, okay, back over into the forum. And everybody in Clubhouse, if you are in front of a computer and can jump over onto YouTube, go up to the top, into the forum, ask a question, be happy to answer it there. Uh, I'm going to answer this one here that they brought up on the screen, but normally we don't ever answer questions in the chat. We do those through the forum. Uh, when you call a septic plumbing company and they come to your house and then they say they won't pump your septic tank because a small bush and gravel is near on top of it, is that normal? Well, it's, Christina, it's normal if they don't want to do the work. Uh, it's, it's hard to say what's normal for different companies. We've gone out to houses before and not been able to find the cleanouts. Now, if they couldn't find the lid or one thing, that's one. But whenever we find cleanouts or, or know where they're at, if there's a bush in a way, we may tell somebody that that bush is going to have to be removed. So it's probably not normal as to what I would call normal, but, you know, it, it's, it's all part of the deal. <coughs> Sorry about that. I'm having a hard time staying hydrated today. All right, back over into the forum. And Josephine de Smet, I am glad that you're listening on Clubhouse. I see you in there also. Those of y'all that don't know what Clubhouse is, it's a new audio app. It's a it's it's a, a new social media platform. It's audio only. So the people over in Clubhouse, literally, they are getting to hear my voice. They're, they don't get to see me on YouTube, which is great for them because I've always been told I have a face for radio. The cool thing about it is there's always a lot of great rooms, and we're trying to build a group on over here and get some more people coming in and, and checking it out and stuff like that. And to me, it, it's to help communicate with people that want to get in the trades or that are in the trades and want to get better. So next question is from George, says, is plumbing a good job to have? George, I got to tell you, if I had to pick any trades – I would absolutely pick plumbing again. I, I love electrical, love HVAC, love stuff like that. But at the end of the day, being a plumber is, man, it's so good for me because I love the analytical behind it. I love walking into a house and solving problems. But also in a new build, I love figuring out how to do things, how to route things, and see what it takes to get it going. <clears throat> Neat thing about it is, though, it, man, to, to me, it's just, it's a wonderful trade. It's a wonderful career. And if you love helping people, it's a great one to be in. All right. Cameron Williams says, Roger, just turned 18 and I'm interested in the plumbing trade. My question is, a well-known company is hiring apprentices with paid training and schooling. Is there a good way to get started? Is this a good way? Absolutely. Uh, 
Cameron, I'm not, I'm not sure where you're located. I always point people towards uh, Ruder Hero in California or uh, the Sunny Plumber. There's there's different places that, that do things different, but I'll tell you what, Ruder Hero in California, and I've met John. He's a wonderful guy. He teaches about how he trains people and the training program they go through, but he teaches them how to get out and make money. So it is wonderful. <clears throat> Great way to start, though. I want to jump in the chat real quick, say hello to Julie Wakefield's in the house, Miss Amber Mendoza, Sean Strong, good to have you in here, brother. Uh, yeah, the Nightbot's not talking to Grayson very well. We're, we're going to have to figure this out. Uh, we may make that a big priority this week. Grayson, if you'll make notes of it, we will make it happen. Uh, Mediocre Max says, I love you and your mustache. Man, that is fantastic because we come together. Next question over in the forum. Those of y'all that hear me over on Clubhouse, want to let you know that we are also live over on YouTube right now. And if you have questions you'd like to ask, go to Roger Wakefield on YouTube. Go to the live stream, go up to the top in the forum. There's a link there to ask a question. And we would be happy to answer it. And then those of y'all in YouTube, after this live stream is over, we're going to jump over in Clubhouse for just a little bit, answer some more questions, and have fun over there. Xander Bird says, what's the most overpriced tool in plumbing? You know, and that's a good question, and, and it's hard to say because I, I don't know what it costs them to make tools, but I do know that you know some of these new press tools, they are expensive. And the, the cool thing about them are that they are, they're going to save plumbers labor, but that they're very expensive to get started with and invested in. So it's, it's really going <clears> to, <throat> it's going to be interesting to see how soon those prices come down, if they come down and if, if they come down enough to make it where more people can get them. That is one of the most expensive, but man, they're a good tool to have. Parker says, hey, Roger, my favorite parts of plumbing video are the extreme pressure when a clog is removed or when the clean out is open. Since you have had like 55 years in this, what are some of your best sewer explosion stories you witnessed with drains blowing or clean outs? Caps. I got to tell you, really nothing crazy. And Parker, the only reason is I'm smart enough to know that if I see pressure, I know it's going to be bad. So I want to look at a different way to get into it. I will tell you a funny story, though. <clears throat> a plumber that I know was doing a test on the sewer system. I mean, sorry, on the storm system. So I believe he said it was 12-inch pipe. He had two floors filled up, and, and this was a big floor, big building, big footprint. He was actually working down in the basement and had his, all his testes in there. And they had a test ball blow. Well, the problem was when it blew, they had all these tables set up because they were doing a, it's almost like a top out party. They had a lot of investors there, a lot of food and tablecloths, and they were literally having a party for the investors. And it flooded. Uh, and I mean, it flooded bad. So all of a sudden, he had about three foot of water in there. And the way he tells the story he just, he walked up to his truck, drove home, called the company and said, hey guys, look, we had a problem. I'll, I'll see y'all tomorrow. Probably not the best way to handle it, but to be honest, there, there's not a lot you can do at that point to fix it, but different people handle things different ways. <clears throat> Maddie Ray says, hey Roger, I'm looking to relocate to Idaho and buy a house with a good amount of acres. I want to put log cabin huts in for relatives. Uh, should I run the sewer directly to the house or do I residential basin sump pumps? Really, it's going to depend on where you're laying these out, where you have a possibility for a septic system, or what kind of sewer you're tied into, and if you can get a drain all the way over there to it. So different ways to look at it, but hopefully you can find something there that will make it work for you. 
Next one in the forum. Nick Seredis says... What is the work-life balance as a plumber in the union, and will they offer vacation time? Here's the deal. Number one, the u- union does not offer vacation time. Now, I did when I was a union contractor because I literally wanted to I wanted to get the best guys in, and I want them to have a little bit more benefits than the union offered. But th- there is a good work-life balance. The, the union does not want to overwork you. And literally, the union has things in place to kind of make sure that doesn't happen. Meaning, they if you work over eight hours a day, it's overtime. You work over 12 a day, it's double time. Most companies don't want to pay you overtime and double time all day long. Not like that. So the crazy thing about it is it is what it is. But they've got it set up to where they've got to pay you so much they don't want to bring you in for all this overtime. That helps the work-life balance. Now, Saturday and Sunday are single or overtime and double time. So that's another thing most companies really don't want to get into. So I've got to tell you, normally the work-life balance is probably better in the union than most companies, but it can go either way. Blake says, when, when my water's turned to hot in my shower, it loses pressure. But when it's only cold, there's a lot of pressure. Is there a reason? Uh, Blake, you've probably got a problem with a cartridge. Don't know what brand faucet you have. I know that most of the single handle faucets, especially if they are, you know, temperature and pressure protected, what happens is they fail cold, meaning it's the cold, the hot side that shuts down. The reason being, if the cold side shut down, it would scald you. So they want to make sure that they do things to cover themselves and Make it where you don't have any problems. So it really works out to be pretty good. And normally changing a cartridge out is something most people can do fairly easy. Brian says, hello, Mr. Wakefield. That'd be my father. I'm just Roger. Uh, My question to you is, what's the best way to remove a toilet flange? I've heard of people using the old-fashioned cut and chisel or using heat. Which method do you recommend without damaging the existing sewer pipes? I, I believe in the heat. If you've got a lead flange and a, a brass, or I'm sorry, a lead riser and a brass flange, heat it up, undo it. That way you're not messing up that lead. You don't tear it. You don't break it. Definitely use heat and get it apart very easy. PVC, it may have to be cut and chipped or maybe just use a repair kit depending on how it's installed, how tough it is. Sam says, I have a building with a three inch PVC main sewer. Number one, I'm sorry, because I think all mains should be at least four inches. Inside needs a new plumbing. I want to use four inch main drain. I do not want to dig up outside right now. Can I either go from four to three or put two three inches into one three inch? Again, this will be upgraded to the street at a future date. You know, if you if you can do the street first, you can probably do that. I don't like the idea of putting two threes into one three, but but it can be done also. Uh, if you just go from a four to a three, you're going to create a flow restriction there, and it's going to start backing up on you. Your, your toilet paper, your poop, anything, any soft stoppage is going to start building up there, and, and it's going to lead to a problem later. So definitely, definitely be careful. With heat, was that the question? I would use heat. How would you feel about employees use it, joining a union? Look, uh, man, I, I used to be union. I have no problem at all. That doesn't bother me. <clears throat> Joshua McKnight says, why at the beginning of the video did the countdown go up? Uh, we had an issue, and when I hit it, it had already rolled around to zero and gone past it. So it jumped back up before I hit start. So my bad. Everything's time for perfection and and I messed it up today. Matthew Moore says, can you get me a shout out in YouTube? I created a YouTube channel. That's about the best you got right there. Joshua. Already answered that one. 
Devin says, what do you think about becoming a home inspector? I have integrity and I want to change the stigma with bad home inspections. You know, that, that's really a, a pretty good question because I know some home inspectors that, that do really, really good quality work. I know some home inspectors that, to be honest, they really probably don't do much. They get in and, man, it's just, it, it's tough because they're, they're not doing the job right. And I, I can tell that by the, the verbiage that they use in the reports. I can tell that by things that they say are wrong that need to be replaced that really don't. So I'm just telling you, I think that there's a, there's definitely a room for improvement. So it just kind of is what it is. All right. Next question in the forum, guys, if you have any questions, please jump over the forum. If you are in here on Clubhouse, and, and man, I see we've got Matt, Josephine, and Neil in here. If y'all are in here on Clubhouse and you have questions, you can jump over into the forum, jump over into the YouTube live stream, go to the top. There's a link to the forum and ask your questions. Nick says, how do you market yourself for an apprenticeship while having zero trade experience? I've been calling 30 plus people a day with no luck. <clears throat> Number one, Nick, I, I would dress nice. And, and I don't mean nice like suit and tie. I mean nice like just wear a nice shirt, a nice pair of jeans, nice boots, something like that. And walk into a company and tell them, look, I, I'm, I'm interested in learning the trades. I'm mechanically inclined. I know a little bit about plumbing. Uh, do what you can do. But, man, if you come in with a great attitude and people think that you seriously do want to come in and work, you, you want to contribute, you want to do good, uh, it, it can be really good. Most people are looking for apprentices. They just, there may be something you're saying when you call, I'm not sure. Finding good apprentices is hard to do, but... Man, it, it literally, it, it can it can make a difference to know when a young man or woman walks in and lets you know that they are serious. Look, I'm here. I really want to work. I really want to do this. Uh, man, it, it can make a big difference. Back over into the forum. Did you have to go to college for plumbing? No. Uh, Adam, to be honest, I, I would have probably got kicked out of college. Uh, I, I'd have gotten in trouble. The The neat thing about it is here in the United States, most parts of it, you can literally just go to work for a plumbing company or you can join the union and move up. You know, you start out as an apprentice, then you become a journeyman, then you become a master. You, you can do different things all along the way. But the cool thing about it is that there's lots of different ways, but over here you don't have to go to college. Now, I believe up in Canada and maybe over in the United Kingdom, you, you do have to. The, the neat thing about it, though, is, is here, and you literally can walk out of high school, go get a job as an apprentice with a plumbing company, learn and grow up, and five years later you can be a journeyman, or actually four. So there's a lot of opportunity there, and... Man, luckily we didn't have to go to college because I got to tell you, I'd uh, I'd probably mess that one up. Everybody in the chat, if you've got questions, please go to the link up in the top where it says forms. Jump over into the forms, ask your question. Ask your question and see what the deal is. Uh those of y'all in Clubhouse, if I was muted, I'm not showing that I was, but I may have touched my phone as possible. So anyway, uh, like I was saying, if you are either in Clubhouse or you're in the chat and you've got questions, please go up to the top, click on the link to the forum, and we will get your question answered. Jaden says, hey man, I learned a lot from your videos, but I was wondering if different types of plumbing make different amounts of money. And, and Jaden, this is really a great question because yeah, they do. Um, num number one, and it's not really based on, on the type of plumbing, meaning 
Co- commercial plumbing can be good if you move up and you you become a superintendent, you become a foreman, you do different things. There, there's always a way to make more money. <clears throat> but I got to tell you too, a lot of residential service plumbers make great money because they work a lot of hours and and maybe they work commission. So there are different ways. And and y'all heard me talking about Ruder Hero a while ago. John says, look, I I teach plumbers that, look, you can make $500,000 a year if you want to. And I really believe the way he does things that he can teach people to do that. My thing is, it's kind of crazy the, the way that they have to do it because there's a lot of, and I don't want to call it selling. There, there's a lot of inspecting and opportunities, and, and you've got to believe 100% you're 100% accurate in everything you do, which the way we're trying to train our plumbers, it will work and do that. But still, half a million dollars a year in sales, it, it, it's, a, it's a busy year for a plumber, and they're going to put in a lot of hours. But that's normally what leads to the different amounts of money. It's normally not a different hourly rate. Just a residential service provider has a lot more money and a lot more opportunity. <clears throat> Jared Adams says, what would be some of the premium tool brands for the plumbing industry? Man, there's so many different ones. What I'll tell you is Rigid, Milwaukee, and DeWalt have been around for years. Uh, as for premium brands of tools, there's... Hand tools, you, you can get into, man, anything from, uh, again, a, a lot of those. Those are probably the three biggest names, brands, and tools that would be Rigid, Milwaukee, and DeWalt. There's other ones too, but th- those would be the three that I think would be the worth the most money. If you can find them in a <clears throat> a, use play, a use sale somewhere, a garage sale, or maybe a, a pawn shop or something, sometimes they're worth buying because normally these things have some really good warranties and stuff like that with them. Sorry, guys, taking a drink of water again. All right, next question from Vegeta says, what do you do if the plunger doesn't work? If the plunger doesn't work, I go straight to a closet auger. Now, we've got a general air snake, which, which we're going to play with, wanting to see how it works. And literally, it's just it's a, a direct supply of air pressure that you shoot right down the toilet and, and clean it out. Man, I, I'm really looking forward to it. Now, the cool thing is <clears throat> a closet auger, and, and I've got a deal that I'm working on. We're going to end up putting together a toilet and mounting it with some clear pipe where you can see how far – the closet auger goes down and see what all we can do with it. So we are definitely looking forward to that. If a plunger doesn't work though, man, you may have problems. Uh, Munisima. Says, doesn't this job smell bad? Do you have nose plugs? You know, I've, I've never used nose plugs. Uh, it, it, it's not as bad as y'all think it, I'm sure that it can be, but normally it, it, man, it, it's not that big of a deal. Sean Strong says, I don't even bother with the plunger on the toilet. I go straight to the closet auger. And you know what, Sean, I normally do too. Um, uh, I do like to try the plunger sometime if I think the water level's high and I can get it down a little bit, but you know, you never know you're liable to blow out a wax or something. So oh, great comment. I love that. Handgun Housecat says, cool YouTube. Roger, man, I appreciate it. We have fun. <clears throat> Ethan Haas <clears throat> says, hey, Roger, I'm 23 and started my open shop apprenticeship about six months ago, and I'm loving it. I'm learning a lot on the job, but was wondering what can I do to learn more on my own? No, number one, Ethan, you're here. Get in here and watch as much plumbing videos as you can on YouTube. Now, I'm not the only plumbing channel. There's a lot of other good channels. But get in here and watch and learn. 
You know, it's funny because I, I literally got a message from somebody the other day that said, look, I've learned a lot of bad things. And there's a lot of people on YouTube giving out a lot of bad advice. And, and it's true. So you've, you've really got to be careful. The, the, the one thing I'll tell you is you're going to go through struggles. It, it's going to be hard. You're, you're going to have days where you think, man, I'm never going to get this. But you know what? You are going to get it. You're, you're going to get it. And, you know, the next day you're going to come in and one day just something's going to click and you're going to have it. It's going to all make sense. And maybe not all of it, but a lot of it. And that's going to help you out. So lay things out, get things done, make it happen, and study all you can. It makes all the difference in the world. And then. What kind, of an ambi- what kind of ambition do you have? What do, can you do? And I love the fact you're asking, what can you do to learn more on your own? But what all do you want to learn? Because one thing whenever I teach people is, you know, never, never stop learning. Because it can make you the best journeyman, the best, man, the, the, the best plumber, electrician, HVAC, it doesn't matter. It can make you the best person at your company. And that's huge. And it's really funny. Uh, I had a guy call me a couple of weeks ago, and he's an apprentice, and he works for a company here in the Dallas area. And he won the best Plumber of the Year award. And I thought that was good for him because he's a great plumber. He's a great apprentice. <clears throat> but then I thought it's bad for him because he doesn't really have anybody at his company that he can learn from. So – and pay attention, learn as much as you can, and it really is a big deal. Uh, yeah, and, and Rapunzel 12.12 says uh, that there's so much bad advice, it's a struggle to find out the truth. And, and man, you're right. <clears throat> How is everybody doing? Matter of fact, if you're in the YouTube chat, do me a favor, leave a comment down there and tell me where you're from today. Where are you here from? Back over in the forum, Andrew Rose says, what if I clog my toilet with my goldfish? Well, if you did, it was a really, really big goldfish. Mike says, my sink has some blockages, slow drain. What to do to clear? Uh, Number one, Mike, if you go over and check out the videos on my channel, I've got videos where I show you how to clear your drain how to take apart your P-trap, how to do all kinds of different things. The, the neat thing about it is that's what I made them for. Uh, it, it literally, oh, we got people from everywhere. Uh, it, it, Mike, it, it literally, it, it comes to taking your P-trap apart, making sure you catch the water, anything out of it. There's a lot of different things that you can do, but, man, get, get in there and get it done. It'll definitely help you out. So I like this. Seattle, Washington, Toronto, Belgium, Central New Jersey. Two different people from Ohio, Montana, Calgary, Alberta, Alberta. England. Man, a lot of people. Washington, D.C., Liverpool, England. I I knew who that was. Uh, Near London, Prestige Plumbing, U.K. Man, we got a lot of cool people in here. Dayton, Ohio. And Dragon Slayer is from Portland, Oregon, second term of fourth year. Fantastic. Good deal. Man, we got people all over the place. Dayton, Ohio. I think I saw that one earlier. It might be a couple of them in here. <clears throat> neat, neat deal. So, Mike, that'll help you out. Uh, like I said, I've got videos in there teaching people how to do just that. Take apart the sink, and, and it'll help you out a lot. Next question is from Matt Gabry. So your dad is self-employed HVAC tech. Talked a little to him about starting a YouTube channel. Any advice how I can help him start with what kind of video topics? I uh, can't wait to talk to you more at Clubhouse. Matt, number one, thank you so much. I appreciate you jumping in here. Here's what I'll tell you is it's really easy. Tell your dad to start making videos about the questions people are calling in and answering. And, and when people call and say, you know, hey, my my AC is not getting cold. What do I do? 
have him make a video about that or have him make a video about what to look for. Some of the best videos that we've got are videos from people that have asked us, what do we do? How do we do it? So pretty cool deal. And such a great way to get going. Uh, Marcus Sheridan calls it, they ask, you answer. Answer the questions people are calling you. If they call your office every day and ask questions, what questions do they ask the most? Because if people are calling you and asking you, other people have that same question, and putting that answer out there can be great. Muslim Plumber says, loud sound horn coming from a one-inch copper domestic line. Thinking about swapping out the PRV. How does that sound? Well, number one, I'd, I'd want to check and find out, is it the PRV making the noise? What's making the noise? If you can get it to happen while you're there and listen and find out where it's located, you might, might find out what the problem is. Muslim Plumber, thank you, sir. That really is a good question. Yeah, because you can get plumbing that makes some crazy, crazy noises. Uh, back in the chat from Dayton, Ohio, Tennessee, Sweden. Delaware, Oahu, Hawaii, Pennsylvania, Lyons, France, Florida, Prentice. Man, we got all kinds of cool people out here. My dad used to go to Dayton every year for the ham radio convention. World famous. Well, I don't know who's world famous. It, it, ain't, it ain't us. Now, Prospect says, hello, dude. Okay, so I like this. Salting Cracker says, I don't like air plungers. I blew a trap off of a tub drain. And had to open the ceiling to fix it. I blew a, a water closet seal out of a toilet with one as well. Mm, that's kind of scary. <clears throat> Zach Morgan says, do people get laid off a lot in the union? It, yes, it can happen. Uh, Troy's the third year, loves the show. All the classes are on Zoom, man, pretty much for everywhere. Uh Dallas Greenberg, I don't have a Patreon. We've talked about it and just decided we just do things a little bit different. But I appreciate you asking. Why does my toilet take forever to fill the tank when I flush? You may need a new fill valve. There we go, Dan, 2010-77 from Pflugerville, Texas. Been there many times. And Baltimore. Uh, Jerry Johnson, yeah, there's a lot of different kind of plumbers. What I would recommend is jumping over into my YouTube in the top right corner. There's a link to Plum Study. Go over there. It'll take you to the free mini course. And you can find out, do you want to be commercial, residential, service, new construction, uh, union or non-union? There's a lot of different questions there, but I'm telling you, it'll really help you out a lot. <clears throat> Guys, remember, if y'all have got some questions, please jump over into the forum. You can do that up at the top of the chat. And if you're in Clubhouse, we are over on YouTube Live. Just go look for Roger Wakefield, and you'll find me. Lynette says, plumbers, <clears throat> came to the apartment because of a sewage backup, used my plunger, left poop all over it, cut an access hole through the drywall, then screwed it back in, but left it exposed. Didn't glue back down the shower insert. Is this normal? Yeah, you know, I hate to tell you no. Or, or it, man, for some companies it may be. Uh, you know, the, the the big deal is Lynette. There, there's a lot of people that do things different. Here's what I would tell you: If you don't like what they did, go to their uh, go to their Google, go to their Facebook, go to their YouTube, go wherever you can, and leave a comment. And, and let people know what kind of work they do. If, or try calling the plumbing company and say, hey, I'm just going to let you know. I don't know if you're aware of what your plumbers did. We like to do happy calls. We like to have our plumbers, when they leave, let Amber know they left. Then Amber can call and check and say, hey, I just wanted to find out how the plumbers do today. Did they do everything they were supposed to? A lot of companies don't, don't even call and follow up. And to me, that's, that's a big problem. So I don't think it's right or good, but maybe the company doesn't know. Maybe it's just they had a bad plumber come out, and sometimes that can happen. Yasin says, I am doing plumbing and heating in school. Should I study refrigeration engineer after school? I'll tell you what, 
uh, refrigeration guys make a lot of money, especially if you can get into ammonia and things like that. There, there's so many good opportunities in the trades. And, and I talk all the time about plumbing, but plumbing, electrical, HVAC, roofing. There are so many different trade opportunities that it really can be very good and a great opportunity. <clears throat> refrigeration is one a lot of people don't get into, but I know refrigeration guys that, that travel around the country doing refrigeration work, they'll come in, work for a week or two, make bank, and, and then just wait for the next job. So it can be a great opportunity. Those of y'all that are in the YouTube live, we are also streaming this on Clubhouse. And if you're on Clubhouse, we are on YouTube at Roger Wakefield. And there's a comment section and forms where you can scroll to the top. If you have questions, scroll up there and ask. And we are trying to go through and answer these as quick as we can. Next, Heather Hayes says, we have a problem with our yard flooding constantly, and we see the sump pump drainage pipe going out. So when it drains, it just refills our yard. You know, the, the, the funny thing about it is, Heather, you, you're going to have to either run a camera through it and see why it's doing what it's doing, how it's doing what it's doing, or, you know, what can be done to, to make that happen. I want to say thank you to Neil, the Urban Explorer. Uh, it says, just because we love you and your team and for the value you bring, but Julie is kind of the best. You know what? Ju Julie is my my boss, my hero, my rock star. Uh, she's also also the one that keeps me in the most trouble, um, meaning I get in trouble for everything that I do. But it, it, it is what it is. Uh Neil, number one, thank you. I love what you're doing. Uh, I see you in Clubhouse often, man, full of great advice. Th those of y'all that are in here that have not subscribed to Neil, uh, his channel is The Urban Explorer. He, man, it's a van life. Uh, man, he's got his van set up where he can live in it, travel the country, do some cool things. And, man, I just, I love watching it. It's cool stuff. So if y'all had not subscribed, go over and check him out and, I'm telling you, you'll enjoy it because Neil's a lot of fun. So, brother, thank you very much. I do appreciate that. In the form says, Derek Cruz says, I'm buying a house and they are replacing the sewer. Are backwater valves enough or should I manual shut off also be installed? The sewer backup videos have me paranoid. Thanks. They won't let you install a valve on, on a sewer drain. A backwater valve should be enough. They don't even require them over here enough or over here. They don't even require them over here. So uh, that's something you shouldn't have to worry about. Steve Arloa says, number one, thank you for the super chat. I do appreciate that. Says, on my own one-man business, am I ripping myself off by not charging as much as the big companies? I've been plumbing for 26 years. Uh, Steve, normally whenever I consult with companies, one of the first things I figure and realize is they're not charging enough. And it, it's a tough thing to hear. I've literally consulted with some of the largest companies in my area because I want to grow and I want to do things. And that's one of the things they always tell me is, is look, uh, you're not charging enough. And it, it's all based on your costs. If you can undercut them a little bit because you don't have as much overhead as they do, that, that can be a great thing. But here's the deal. You don't want to just make a ton of profit. I mean, don't get me wrong, you do. But but you want to do it the right way. My, my big thought is you want to look in your vans, in your marketing, in your advertising, in, in the way you dress, everything you do. You're, you're trying to look as big as them. And it's funny because I didn't know that until I started doing marketing and the guy that did my marketing looked at my channel and looked at the, the biggest plumbing companies around and said, Roger, you don't, you're, you don't look like you're as big as them. I said, well, I'm not. He said, yeah, but customers don't need to know that. 
They need to think you are just as big, just as good, just as strong as them. And, and I tell you what, it's really set us apart. So, Steve, I would say uh, you're probably ripping yourself off. You're probably right. But there's formulas and things. We're part of SGI. <clears throat> there's another group called uh, Nexstar, and they help you put pricing together. PHCC has a, has a phenomenal system to help you figure out your pricing. So there's a lot of different ways to do it that, that are amazing. And, man, I really, really hope that helps you. All right. Got another question here. So this is Roger. <clears throat> Sorry, Tony Johnson says, Roger, getting into the trades, I want to grow and eventually own my own company. What are the different things that I can do? And this is really good because you've got to figure out what it is that you want in the long run. And, and this is one thing whenever I'm teaching my courses. What is your end game? And anybody getting into the trades right now, I would tell you, that is something that you need to think about. What is your end game? What, where do you want to end up at? And you can say, well, look, I just want to work for myself, so I'm going to undercut everybody else. I'm going to only charge $100 an hour. <clears throat> and then all of a sudden you're, you're working 20 hours a week. You're making a couple of grand a week. And you're like, man, if, if I was charging more than this, I could afford to hire somebody else. Well, now you've got to come in and raise your prices, and it's hard to do. So you've constantly got to be looking at what is your end game? Where do you want to be? And is what job you're doing right now helping you get any closer to that? And the reason that I ask is if you're not getting closer to your end game, you're just you're in a rut. You're in a steady roll. So what I would tell you is figure out how you're going to end up where you want to be. If you want to open your own company one day, start looking at it now and, and think, the things I'm learning now, are they going to help me get to where I want to be? Are they going to help me become a business owner? Because the, the cool thing about it is when you start out right now and you're looking at what kind of business owner you want to be, you're going to realize when you learn things, hey, this can help me in the future. You're also going to figure out this may not help me in the future. This is something I want to learn to avoid. And it does happen a lot. But you've always got to know where it is you're headed, what you want to be, and constantly work to get there. And when you find yourself in a job, you find yourself in, in a position where, hey, look, I'm not really learning the things that I want to learn here. What kind of changes do you need to make? Because it literally, it, it, it can affect you because you can get in that rut and, and start learning bad things or start learning the wrong way to do things. And eventually, it's going to hurt you as an apprentice or a plumber. But the, the, the big problem is it may keep you from getting to where you want to be because you're not learning things the right way. So that, that is one thing that, that I got to tell you, it, it's kind of tough. So what you've got to do, you've got to ask yourself. And, and Tony, look, I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on about this one because this is one that I, I teach about a lot. But one of the things that I'll tell you is <clears throat> that you, you've got to constantly look at your character. What kind of plumber do you want to be? What kind of an apprentice do you want to be? Because when you first start out, you've got to tell yourself, look, I want to be the best apprentice I can be because that's going to help lead you into becoming the best journeyman. And then whenever you open your own company, then you're going to become the best owner. You're going to always have that mindset. And believe it or not, it starts mm -hmm. – when you're an apprentice, it is really hard to be a bad apprentice and just kind of fudge your way through, then become a journeyman, fudge your way through. But then when you get to being a company owner, you're like, well, now I'm going to do everything perfect and right. Y your mind's not built for it. So you have to think about that. What kind of character do you have? What kind of person do you want to be? Then after that, what kind of connections do you have? What kind of connections have you made along the way? You want to make sure that as you get closer to it, as you become that journeyman, you have literally worked very hard to build relationships with supply houses, with contractors, with subs, 
anybody that you may need. And then the last one is, what kind of contributions have you made into the trades, into the community? What kind of contributions have you made towards possible contractors to work for our homeowners? What have you done? Because to me, the, the big challenge is, and, and, it, and it all ties together, but it's your character, your connections, and your contributions. And once you get those all tied together, and you are working to head in the right direction, man, it makes opening your own business so much easier, so much better, because you've worked really hard to get to where you want to be. I don't know what's going on. I'm not muted. Uh, it says I am. Man, I've never even touched my phone, so I'm not sure. We're, we're, we're checking out Clubhouse and what's going on here. Uh, I mute in, I mute out, just to see what if we're having problems. Uh, so anyway, Tony, that, that was great. Uh, the, you know, the, the other things that I'll tell you is work really hard to you know understand that, that that you have goals and enjoy every day because you are working towards those goals. And if you want to be a great company owner one day, it, it, it starts in the beginning. But understand that and enjoy every day. And understand, look, today you may be learning how to dig a ditch, but you know what? To be a good company owner, you've got to understand what that takes. And it, it's hard, but it, it is what it is. And don't hurry up the process. It takes a while. You cannot get 40 years experience in five years. I don't care how good you are. And you can learn a lot of good things, and you can try to learn it faster and harder and stronger and, and better, but that's a big deal. And then while you're learning, think about how it helps you and how it helps the company, how it's going to help you in the future, how it's going to help your customers. There are so many things there to describe and, and think about, but you've got to start thinking about it that way. Because if you can see in your mindset how this helps you in the future, it makes the learning process so much better. So I know I got kind of long-winded on that one, but man, that, that was a really, really good question. Uh, anybody else, if you are in the YouTube, uh, and Julie says she can hear, still hear me, good. I think uh, Austin's phone is going in and out, and he, he's having, no, it's not his phone. You can't hear me either. Oh, well. So maybe I am going in and out. Uh Anyway, if you've got questions in and you're in the, the YouTube stream, please go over in the forum uh, or go up to the top, click on the forum, go over and ask your question. If you're in Clubhouse and you see us over in here, you can go over to Roger Wakefield on YouTube. We've got a forum up in the top. Go in, click it, and come over and ask your question. Lewis says, what additional things should be monitored when upset on septic? Sorry about that, guys. You know, the, the, the big thing about septic is, is not clogging your system. And, and I'm going to talk about this like I know what I'm doing, and, and I don't work on septic systems. But hello, C. Jane Drill is in the house. I love that. How are you doing? Leah, good to see you in here. The cool thing about it, though, is if, if you're on septic, you want to just – Think about your water usage. You don't want to flood your septic tank, and you don't want to put a lot of stuff in there. It's going to be a problem. You may want to go down to single thickness toilet tissue, but also one thing that you might think about is using, and, and I've, I've got the Cottonelle flushable wipes around here, and that's what I recommend to everybody, but don't even put them in the tank because, or don't even put them in the toilet because they're going to end up in your septic system. So what I would do is literally put them in the trash can and just make sure you carry your trash out. So I think it'll help you out a lot on a septic system. And man, it's, like I said, it's just something I don't deal with a lot, but I do. I, I completely get it. And if you're thinking about it all the time, you know, what can you do to avoid any problems? It'll help you a lot. Troy said, 
I love what you do. Third year plumbing. I always listen when I work. Uh, Troy, number one, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, so, Troy, if you're over in the chat, you know, leave me a comment. What do you think about the things that I'm talking about, about people that want to open their own company? Uh, you know, understanding that, that, that the challenge is it's their, their character, it's their connections, it's the community, it's their contributions, it's what are they doing to build everything and grow because it, it'll help you. Uh, man, once you get all that down, there's nothing that can stop you. And if you ever decide to open your own company and you've thought about these things all the way through your career, man, it's, it's going to be a phenomenal company and, and it's going to be there for you. So I love that. Troy, thank you so much. All right. John says, <clears throat> what first got you into the plumber's trade? Um, really good thing is that I was, I was managing a burger joint. Uh, I actually worked at, uh, a fast food place. I was the manager. I was 16 years old, had a great friend of mine working there with me. And he literally, one night we were talking, it was slow. And he said, man, are you going to do this forever? And I'm like, dude, I am managing a restaurant. I'm 16 years old. I've got it made. And he says, well, what are you going to do if you quit or get fired? Who's going to hire a 16 year old restaurant manager? And that blew me away. So it was probably a few weeks later, I either quit or got fired. But that night he told me about his father and his three older brothers that were all in plumbing and they all loved it. And we had talked about it. So whenever, and, and I probably got fired, <clears throat> but whenever that happened, I got in touch with one of his brothers and said, look, I, I want to come to work with you. So I did. And I realized I loved it. it. It was a lot of fun. It was great. And man, I just, I thoroughly enjoyed what I was doing. So the cool thing is going from there, I wanted to learn more. And that, that's one thing that, that I should have told Tony a while ago is, you know, another big thing is when you are learning how to be an apprentice, how to be a good journeyman, how to be a good master, how to eventually open your own company. Try to learn it better than anybody else and never stop learning. I am 57 years old. I've been plumbing for 40 years, actually over 40 years now. And I've got to tell you, I still love learning. I love learning about plumbing, learning about social media, learning about everything that I'm doing to help me, my company, and my team grow. And I've got to tell you, it's huge, but I love it. So that's what got me into it. And I'm, I'm telling you, John, if this is something you want to do, it is a great trade to be in. It's a lot of fun. And you can learn and grow and do just about anything you want to do. So I've got Derek, Justin, Taylor, Appleton. How do you increase water flow in an apartment? Number one, that's probably hard to do. Are you talking hot or cold? And are you talking the entire apartment or just a certain spot of it? Meaning maybe you don't have good water pressure in your shower. Uh, and all that matters because number one, an apartment, it's really hard to increase pressure to it because Pressure is what whatever is any of the property. Is your particular unit have less pressure than the rest of them? They may have a pressure reducing valve or something like that. So that's kind of what you're going to have to check with. It is hard <clears throat> to just increase your pressure anywhere. So I'm going to jump over in the chat for a minute. CJ and real good to see you in here, Lee. I hope you're doing well. Uh, Danny Kane says, your thoughts on bad PMs. I, I tell you what, Danny, bad PMs and good PMs can make or break a, make or break a job. Uh, I've got a guy out of Austin, a guy named Brent Tier, phenomenal. And 
he literally, man, he understands PM. He understands his role. He understands my role and he understands how he can feed me and help me. He's also one of the PMs that taught me, look, he, I'm a PM. Treat me like a tool. Use me to get the things you need. And I've had some bad ones. Uh, I've had some PMs that you could tell, hey, I need this. And, and man, it went right through that nothingness inside their head. So it, it's kind of crazy, but bad PMs, man, I go straight to the company owner and say, hey, look, I got a problem. I'm not getting the help that I need and explain what it is you're needing and not getting. Uh, and I document stuff like that. When I'm on a big job, if I've asked my PMs for something in particular, I make sure that I document the emails, the reply or the lack of reply or the smart ass reply or whatever it is. I make sure I document all that. That way, if I ever have to do come in and talk to the owner of the company, I can say, Hey, look, I want to show you the problems I'm having. I'm trying to run this $20 million job and I'm not getting support. But like I said, I've had some great ones too. All right. Uh, Sean Strong, you always trying to get me in trouble, man. Uh, coffee and concrete and waste joint cut out. Okay, anytime you got pictures or videos of good or bad plumbing, and, and Sean Strong's done this, I appreciate it, brother. Uh, go over to our subreddit account. Uh, it's Roger Wakefield Posts. If you'll go over there, put your pictures, put your videos in, and let us see what you've got. We, a lot of times, bring them into YouTube videos. We have fun with it, and, and we find a way to try to find a way to make it all work. Uh, Danny Keen again, any thoughts on bad office staff? You know, I got to tell you, yeah, and, and we've gone through some, we, we, we've gone through some dispatchers and, and, and receptionists and stuff. I, I got to tell you, we are so lucky to have Amber because Amber, man, she gets it. She has amazing customer service skills. She feels for the customer. And, and when the customer calls in and, and talks to her, man, she knows what they're going through. And she is phenomenal at explaining things to her. And by the time I normally get out to a house and talk to a customer, they can look at me and tell me, hey, look, I just want you to know I have – been kept so involved and informed by Amber and everything going on. So it is, it's wonderful. Uh, she is just great at what she does. And then Danny says, an office that blames the field for their mistakes. I, I got to tell you, and I explained this to an office one day because me being a superintendent, I was in the office one day and I heard some people complaining about the guys in the field. You know, the guy in the field wants this. The guy in the field wants that. And they were just, I mean, talking trash. <clears throat> and I literally walked in the office, and there were two ladies in there. I said, you realize we get paid to do what those guys in the field do. We don't get paid for you sitting in here in the office pushing papers, doing this and that. That's not what people hire us for. They hire us because of what we do in the field. So when those guys in the field need something, if it's to help them do their job, do it better, or just make their lives easier, remember what they're doing is paying your bills. So do me a favor and please try to help them a little bit. And i tell you what, it blew these ladies' minds, but they ended up talking to me the next couple of weeks and said, wow, Roger, you know what? We've never looked at it like that. And, and you know what? You're right. That's what we get paid to do. So sometimes just a nice communication uh, with them can help a lot. Uh, Geno City Set Forms, most lucrative type of business to be in, service renovation or new work. Uh, service and repair. <clears throat> and the reason I say that is, you know, service and repair, you literally, you walk into people's houses, you normally walk out that day getting paid. People are calling you all the time looking for you. You're not having to just get out and sell, sell, sell your work. Don't get me wrong. When you go in and you find problems, you, you've got to be able to talk to them and explain them to them and give them options and stuff like that. So that part makes it kind of different. 
And some plumbers are like, look, I hate selling. And I tell them, you're not selling. You are the trained professional. You're coming in to look at their problems, figure out what they are, and give them options to fix it. <clears throat> so that is a great way to look at it. Mark James says, how does toilet paper clog the water line? It, it shouldn't. It, if toilet paper is in your water line, I want to know why or how. Uh, man, the only way I can see toilet paper clogging the water line is if somebody was silly enough to put it in there as a water stop while they were soldering or something. But, man, toilet paper should never be on the water line. <clears throat> Uh, Denny Kane says, thank you, Roger. You just gave me 50 cal ammo, man. Sometimes 50 cal ammo is what it takes. And I know cause I have a 50 BMG. Uh, Amber says, I love taking care of our customers. Plumbing work can be scary. Amen. Uh, you know, Amber and look, Amber is so good at what she does and it, it does. It helps a lot to have somebody that can get in there, talk to people and, and Julie too. And, and you know, it started with Julie. Because I started off answering the phones, then Julie, then we've had a couple of, of receptionists that, that didn't make it, and Amber has done phenomenal. Hmm. Reading through the questions here, or actually reading through the chat right now. Uh, you know, Jonathan Talley says, hey, Roger, at my old house, one time I turned the knob on a sink in my bathroom, and it just started spraying water. Uh, I, I got to tell you that this is one thing that I always recommend to anybody and everybody is know how to turn the water off at your house because you never know when a handle is going to break, a cartridge falls apart, and water floods everywhere. You need to know how to turn that water off and how to do it quick. Big deal. And Mark, I'm just wondering how you got water in your water line or Toilet paper in your water line. Marissa Craft says, do you recommend single basin or double basin sinks? Is one better than the other for plumbing? You know, for plumbing, it, it's really not. Uh, Marissa, what I will tell you is that I like a single that, that's big, but I've got a double now that are big and the compartments are squared off. So there's really a little bit more room and it's even deeper. I like the two compartments in case I need to let things soak in one. I don't just lose my sink. So it really, man, it's, it's up to you and personal preference. If I'm selling one to a customer, I normally sell them a double. The reason being, that's what most people are used to. But every now and then I'll have somebody tell me, look, I just want a big kitchen sink with just one big compartment. And if they really know that that's what they want, that's exactly what they'll get. Julie says, when dealing with customers, it starts with the heart. You can genuinely care about them. And, you know, those of y'all that don't follow us on LinkedIn, uh, Amber and I did a LinkedIn Thursday, and Julie and I will do one tomorrow. But literally, last Thursday, Julie and I, or Amber and I talked about falling in love with your customers. If you fall in love with your customers, you're always going to do the right thing. And, and it is. It is such a big deal to treat your customers right. And, and if you just hate your customers and you just see them as a revenue source, you're, you're not worried about doing the right thing. You're just worried about the money thing. You've got to learn to care or love for, or love your customers, either care for them or love them. But if you do that, you're going to do what's right. And it really is a big deal. Austin Liss, y'all doing okay? Fantastic. All right, back over into the forum real quick. And guys in the chat here on YouTube, if you've got any questions, please jump over into the forum uh, or jump up in there, come over and fill it out, and we will get to every question in it. Zach says, how long does it usually take to get in the union? I'm thinking of going for plumbing after I graduate high school. Zach, I would probably actually go ahead and go down to your union. And talk to them now and, and let them know, hey, look, I'm interested. I want to find out what your requirements are, how long it takes, what I've got to do, and, and different things like that. Communicate with them now. Let them know that you're interested. That way when you come back, maybe they'll remember and you're like, man, this kid's persistent. 
And sometimes a little thing like that can make a big difference. I love that. Guys, remember, if you are in the chat, uh, please go up into the forum and ask questions there. Uh, yes, please. Thank you, ma'am. Getting a refill for all my water. I appreciate that. Thank you, Julie. Uh, if you are in, you know, the, the thing is, if you're really interested in getting in plumbing and you go talk to the union now and you talk to them and explain to them, look, this is where I'm at. This is what I want to do. This is why I want to do it and start talking to them. Maybe they can give you advice too. Maybe they'll give you, hey, this is what I would study if I were you. But I'll tell you, you're in here right now. Start watching these videos and learn a lot of the different things that we talk about. That way, when you do go in and talk to them, if they ask you about measurements or they ask you about a two-way clean out, they ask you about different things, you've at least got some knowledge and you can talk to them and, and it's really going to help you and make you look better. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate that. Is my truck back yet? Cool. You got the keys and everything? Okay. Uh, sorry about that. I've got guys working on my truck, putting new lights on. So fun day today. So Zach, that, that's one thing that could really be a big deal is starting that conversation now, communicating with them, finding out what they want, what they need, what they like, and going from there. And if you lost me on Clubhouse for a minute, I uh, have played with it again. And I don't know why it does it. I guess it's to keep one person from talking too long. But I have heard Nick talk for a long time. Back over in the forum. <coughs> Mark again. Oh, different Mark. Okay, so Mark over here. <clears throat> wants to know how you do different things to become a good plumber. And, and, and this is a really good one because a, a lot of plumbers don't care. And, and here's what the problem is. A lot of plumbers, a lot of tradesmen, not just plumbers, think that once you get your license, look, I'm done. I'm a professional plumber. I'm a professional electrician, whatever it is. The thing is, you literally, and, and I was asked this in an interview a few months back, and that's what made me start thinking about it. But, but literally what happens is a lot of people, they get their license and they think, okay, look, I'm done now. I'm good. I always wanted to be a plumber. Now I are one. And when, when you look at it and you say, okay, I've got my license. I'm done. I'm good. The big problem is you get complacent, you, you get in a rut, you get stuck. And to me, that's never where I want to be. I want to, I want to look at it and say, I always want to learn and grow. So if, if you look at it from the point of view of, I'm not going to stop till I'm on top. Once you get your license, now you can move up to foreman or superintendent or director of operations. Maybe you move up to project manager. Maybe you move up to plumbing company owner one day. So there's a lot of different things that you can do, but the big thing is never stop learning because you can become the, the best company in your world, whether your world is your city, your neighborhood, your region, your, your county, however big you're trying to grow and be, the more you learn, the more you grow, the more it's gonna help. So. I think that's neat. Uh, Mark, I appreciate that question be, because learning and never growing is what's going to make a difference. So, guys, if y'all are in the chat, you've got any more questions, please uh, jump up into the forum, ask your questions there, and see what the deal is. And, and Dragon Slayer, you should be able to post on Reddit. If you go into our subreddit, you should be able to post a picture or video or anything like that. You may have to sign up for it, or, or you may have to join that group. I'm not sure. But try it, man. Steve Arloa says, I'm 26 years old and learning new things every day. Uh, Steve, I am 57, 
and I'm still learning new things every day, I promise. Danny Kane says, Roger, just for our vets, how can we or us get paid VA bennies and work at the same time? If you're already a licensed plumber, it's hard, but you can get your you can get your VA benefits. Or, or, and that's not really VA benefits. Man, I don't know. I've never looked at it that way. I, I know that I've had people get into the trades and they've been able to use their GI Bill. Uh while they learned, while they went through the apprentice training program and stuff like that. So <clears throat> I don't know how you can get your VA benefits, though. John Tully says, bye, Jonathan. Good to see you in here. I appreciate it. Uh, only Wonder Bread. There you go. Yeah, and if y'all are in here, uh, if you've got some comments, please jump up into the top, into the forum. Uh, go over and... Ask your questions there. We have got lots more questions, but I want to keep going through them. And I still love jumping over in the chat every now and then just to visit. Got that one there. Gino says, what do you do if you hit a gas tube? A man. <clears throat> Number one, you don't want to do that. Uh, if you do, the gas company is going to charge you to fix it and charge you to make the repair and charge you to do that. The, the neat thing about it is hopefully, uh, and, and we have a deal here in the United States where we have to call dig tests, meaning we have to call and have them come locate the utilities before we start digging. So as we do that, it, it really is a big help. Czar says, and from the on poultry guys, absolutely. Sorry, now I say that. Hi, is it true you can use bread to plug water in a copper pipe to solder it? Absolutely. And, you know, the, the funny thing is we used to do that. Used to learn, and I'll tell you a funny story real quick. Uh, actually, the plumber that I started working with the very first time I started plumbing, he had done residential service for a while. And he told me about it one day, and he had gone to a house, and it was friends of ours, people that we knew. And he literally, he was trying to fix a leak out in the front yard. <clears throat> and he went to the door, and he says, hey, I, I got a question. He says, can I, can, can I get a piece of bread? And the funny thing about it is they were like, yeah, yeah, just, just a minute. And they walk in the house, and they literally bring him out a whole plate of food. And he said, what's this for? And I said, well, you're asking for bread. We thought you were hungry. And he started laughing. He said, no, I'm, I'm trying to make a solder joint. And I'll, I'll tell you how you do it. If you can't get all the water out of a pipe, meaning you've shut down the water, you've killed the pressure, you've cut it loose, you're trying to drain it, if it all won't come out, you can take bread. And I normally take like a pencil with an eraser. And you can pack bread up in there. So take your first little piece and like ball it up and then stick it in there and then push it in there with the bread and then take a little bit more, stick it in there and then just kind of pack it in tight. The bread will absorb the water, but it'll keep it from flowing over to where you're at. Then you can quickly put your coupling, put your valve, put whatever on there that you need to, solder it up. Then you want to get pressure behind it and open it up because you want to blow that bread out. But, yes, it can be done, and, it, and I'm telling you, it works. I've done it before. And Danny Keene, I don't have a caddy. I have a pickup truck. No, I don't have horns on it. <clears throat> anyway, uh, Neon Polkgeister, I appreciate that. Back in the question. Oh, back where I was, though. Man, you know, I'm sorry. Here's the thing. We have dig tests. Hopefully you get it marked and you don't hit a gas line. If you do... Notify the gas company immediately because you don't want that gas just flowing where somebody could come by smoking it and, and cause an explosion. But you want to be very, very careful in everything you do because, you know, digging in an area where there is even a gas line can be dangerous. And depending on how you hit it, what's right next to it, things like that, you're liable to hit it, cause a spark at the same time, and then you've really got a problem. So be very careful. 
Reed Crosby says volume versus pressure. Man, that's a whole topic right there. Uh, just watch your Green Goblin video. Fantastic. Sean Strong, good to see you in here, brother. Uh, yes, we will see you in the morning on LinkedIn Live. If you aren't connected with me or Sean Strong or Julie or Amber or Neil C., the Urban Explorer, uh, man, LinkedIn Live is another good place to be or LinkedIn. Any of y'all got questions, please jump over into the forum. Brett says, I need to plumb a washer in the basement. How would I plumb it so the drain runs up in the ceiling over to the stack? Would you need a one-way valve? No, what you're going to need is you're going to need a, a pump. You're going to need a sump pump. You're going to need a way to drain that washing machine into a pump where it can pump it up and drain it over. Your, your washing machine's not going to pump it up. Not like that. At least I say that we don't have basements here, but I'm thinking you're going to need a, a catch basin and a sump pump and a way to pump that up. It's probably going to have to be a big one because those washing machines pump out a lot of water. 811, Sean, boy, you are right. That's the dig test. Call them, tell them where you're digging and what you're doing. It'll keep you out of trouble. Sam says, any suggestions for a plumber apprentice? Man, Sam, come back and watch this video over. Uh, man, I got a ton of them. Uh, number one, we, we've got a, a bunch of videos that we've made just about the subject, meaning how to get into the trades, how to get better at the trades, how to become the best apprentice, how to become the best journeyman, a million different things that you can do to help you grow. Uh, we've talked about a lot of them in here and the, the one thing that I'll tell you is if you're, if you're just starting out or are you in the right spot, meaning are you doing commercial? Are you doing residential? Are you doing new service? Are you doing construction? What is it you're doing? And do you love it? It can make all the difference in the world. Uh, number one, I hope you are. I hope you're enjoying doing what you do. But number two, it, it, it's something that literally suggestions can, can depend on what you want out of it. You know, do you want to eventually open your own company? Do you just want to be a plumber forever? Do you want to, do you want to be a foreman, a superintendent? Do you want to move up? Something I talked about earlier is constantly look in the future and think about where you want to be, how you want to get there. Uh, it, it literally can be huge because you've got to think about your character. What do you bring to work with you every day? And the neat thing about it is if you are constantly focusing on where you want to be, what kind of company owner you want to be, what kind of journeyman you want to be. And this is why I tell people, especially apprentices, start now trying to be the very best that you can be. Because then when you become a journeyman, you've already got that mindset. You want to be the best. Then when you start looking at the things you've got to do to open your own company, you understand that. In order to be the best, you know what it takes. You know how to outwork everybody else. You know how to do those things and do them right. So the next suggestion I would have for you, Sam, is go into my YouTube channel and watch every video I've ever made and watch them multiple times because there may be things that I talk about that you think, okay, this isn't important to me, but it literally may be what sets you apart in the future. So Think about it. Steve says, just to clarify, I've been plumbing 26 years. I'm 44 years old. I've been plumbing 40 years. I am 57 years old. So, guys, look, there's a lot of experience in here. Uh, Andrew Kromarzik, I hope I got that right. Just had fun changing out a crack gate valve. How long have you been plumbing? Uh, if you're a plumber in here, do me a favor. Leave a comment. Let me know where you're a plumber and how many years experience you have. Or how old you are and how many experience you have. Either way. <clears throat> uh, Dion Potgeister again says, having underground gas lines must be a whole different story. We don't have underground gas lines, and I don't really like gas. You know, th the good thing is, and, and, and Dion, look, you, you get in here a lot, so I, I know you know what you're talking about. The, the cool thing is, 
we do have underground underground gas lines, but but we know how to look for them. We know how to bring them out in advance, mark them, and avoid them. But the neat thing about it is the only time that they come up out of ground is like for the meter, then they go back in to get up to the house. And man, I get busted on my videos. They're like, why don't you have concrete bolsters up? Why don't y'all protect them? Why don't y'all do this? Man, it's been this way since I was a kid. So I don't really understand why people freak like they do. As long as you treat gas like, look, it could explode. I have to keep it from leaking. I have to do this. I have to do this. Man, it makes a big difference. So anyway, that's that's kind of why we look at it the way we do. I don't know why anybody wouldn't like gas. It's really not that bad. It's just something that we got to look at and deal with. And just like anything else, think about it whenever you're running it and be safe with it, and you won't have any problems at all. Liz Austin, thank you all very much. I appreciate it. Uh, we're kind of shifting out crews a little bit, moving things around so everybody can get their stuff done. Uh, again, if y'all are over in the forum, please jump up to the top. Go over to the forum and ask your questions. And <laughs> Neil says, I'm, I'm not on LinkedIn. Not sure if it's for me. Man, I, I get it. <clears throat> All right. Running through the chat real quick, just a minute. Uh, Andrew says, you got it right, man. I love that. Perfect. Thank you so much. Prestige Plumbing in the UK. Yes, there is asbestos here and have certified people to remove. You know, here's the deal is, is we, in the United States, we don't literally, and I say don't, we normally don't as plumbers deal with the asbestos. There's asbestos abatement companies because asbestos really is a big deal over here. I did a really big remodel at DFW Airport, and the companies that come in and remove the asbestos, man, they do a good job. And it's a it's a big business over here, so it, it really is. It, it's kind of tough, but it, it's a great thing because getting in here and – Doing that kind of thing is just a lot of fun. Uh, I've got Grayson in here now. So, G Grayson, what's your – is it your sister or your sister-in-law that watches these on Mondays? My sister. Your sister. And what's her name? Sinclair Poirier. Sinclair Poirier. How are you – if you're in here, Sinclair, I want you to leave a comment. And if you're not, Grayson's going to text you and say, you missed it. Roger gave you a shout-out, and, and, and you weren't even in here to – to hear it. So Sinclair, if you are in here, uh, just jump in, say hello, and, and know that we wanted to say thank you, and we do appreciate it. Uh, I'm not sure if Amber's still in here or not. Amber's been reminding me to say hello to you. So I just wanted to make sure that we gave you a shout out today. Sam Stuff, I hope that that helps you. Watching these videos, you will learn so many different things that can literally help you become a better apprentice, a better journeyman, a better business owner, and a better business owner that uses social media the right way to grow his business. So I really hope that it does. And I'm going to try something here just to see something. Okay. And I tried seeing if she was in here under her name, and I don't see her, so maybe not. Okay. Well, cool. Oh, no, no. It's, it's good to have her in here. <clears throat> okay. Abdul says, is a half inch PEX water line going to a faucet too small? It's the kind of PEX with the crimp rings. You know, it, it, it man, it, it's just one that, man, I, I, I'm upset a lot of plumbers over this. I'm not going to say the half inch PEX line is too small. I'm saying if it was me, I would probably increase it to three-quarter inch because I want the extra flow. And it's not that the pipe is too small. It's the fittings. The crimp fittings are small enough they can go inside of the pipe, and that creates flow restriction. So you want to be very careful in everything that you run, what kind of flow, what kind of pressure do you need. And it doesn't affect the pressure much until everything else starts getting opened up then it'll really kill your flow. 
it's going to seem like low pressure, but it's really low flow. Anyway, man, it, it can be tough. Look, I like PEX. I think PEX is going to be amazing for a long, long time. So, man, no, nothing against it. I just wish plumbers would learn to upsize it. That way we don't cre create problems for our customers. Tyler says, do you prefer a water softener system or an anti-scale system? I, I prefer anti-scale. My only reason being is, you know, they say there's two kinds of people. When, when you're explaining a water softener to a customer and, and you say, you ask them how, how it makes you feel or how it makes them feel, they'll either say they feel silky or they feel slimy. If they feel silky, they love a water softener. If they feel slimy, they hate it. I feel slimy and, and I feel like I have to shower for about 10 extra minutes because I'm continuously trying to rinse that sliminess off and it, it doesn't always work. So... It's kind of tough. All right. Back over into the chat. How long have you been a plumber for? Get knobbed. I have been plumbing for 40 years. Uh, Danny Kane's been with his company for 25. And I asked everybody post earlier if they're a plumber, how long they've been plumbing. Out. There we go. Prestige Plumber UK, 42 years old, 26 years in business. Uh TV Junkies is 46 and trying to find an apprenticeship. You know what? And I got to tell you, there's nothing wrong with that. I have, I have seen apprentices start at 55 years old. I mean, literally seen apprentices at 55. And Texas asked this question every year, and I think the oldest apprentice in Texas right now is 83. So, look, you can do what you want to do. I mean, Deep says, guys, can you help me with some DIY? Can you hang a 15-pound mirror on a plasterboard wall? I'm using good fixings but feeling uneasy. Man, I don't even know. Uh, that might be one that you go over to Paul Peck Drywall Tube and, and give him a shout and ask him. That Man, that's not even up my alley. So wouldn't know what to tell you. I see that. Can you post it up here? I know you can do it. Or you might grab Austin and Liz and see how to do it. They were just doing it. It's it's Dion Potgaster, so uh, I'll I'll ask it. We don't need to figure that out right now. It says, it says, where do I find that YouTube subscriber sign that you have? Did someone build it? it it's actually it's a sign. That it's by La Metrics. If you go into our description and scroll down, you'll normally find a link to it. <clears throat> it is really pretty cool. We love it. Man, I get comments about it almost every single video we do. So kind of neat to me. Uh, yeah, the deck is not stacked against you. I, I tell you what, guys, it, here's the deal. It, it's not stacked against anybody, and, and that's just your own mindset. Because look at me. I walked in a social media conference at the age of 54 and thought, wow, I'm going to learn social media. And, and there were a lot of people that laughed at me. There were a lot of people that thought, you know, this guy's crazy. Uh, literally, th there are people that <laughs> people that just, just thought, you know, you will never, ever grow on social media being that old, being a plumber, not knowing what you're doing. You want to talk about card stacked against you, uh, it is huge. Here's the thing, though. I didn't listen to them. I said, you know what? This is what I want to do. And if you'll walk in and do the things that you want to do, if you'll walk in and learn, hey, look, I'm going to try this, and I'm going to be consistent at it, and I'm going to get good at it, and I'm going to keep working on it, it can help you. So I hope that helps. And I see Grayson got the super chat up. Dion Potgaster again, thank you so much. And like I said, it's called Lometric. Look down in our description. There should be a link in there. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, 
who laughs will find them and they will suffer. You, you know what? It, but, but but it's funny all the time. Well, I mean, one of them was D. I mean, think about it. I, I'm I'm in Nick Nim- Nimmin's live stream one day, and he, and he really didn't laugh at me, so I don't mean that bad. But but the funny thing is, you know, D. Nimmin says, and, and I'm in a live chat with 300, 400 people, and literally the, the big problem is there's so many people that think just I could never do this. And, you know, I've got a, I've got a saying up on, in front of my treadmill that says, you know, most people wonder or ask themselves, what if this doesn't work? I always ask myself, but what if it does? So, you know, Dean Emmett is talking in a live stream, and, and somebody else was saying the same thing. <clears throat> I, I could never do this. I could never uh, – I, I, I'm a whatever. I'm a HVAC tech. Nobody's ever going to watch it. Yada, yada, yada. And he's like, okay, w- wait a minute. He says, if I walked into a room with 500 people and walked around to everybody and asked them, what do you do? Or what's your name and what do you do? And he said, if I came to Roger and he says, I'm Roger, I'm going to grow to be the biggest YouTube plumbing channel on YouTube. And he just says, I'd say, yeah, good luck with that. And move on to the next one. He says, but look at what Roger's done. Look at the team he's put him around him. Look at how he does it, why he does it. And, man, you can do anything in the world you want to do, but you've got to decide that. And, and, and I like that uh, about, uh, you know, don't, don't let other people tell you what you can do. Tell yourself what you can do. But if you've already convinced yourself in your head that you can't do something, you're probably right. So what I'll tell you is wake up tomorrow and, and look at it different and say, you know what, I'm going to do this. Don't tell yourself you want to. Don't tell yourself you should. Tell yourself, I'm going to do this. And then do it better than anybody. And, and don't get me wrong, you're not going to start out plumbing better than anybody. You're not going to start out on YouTube better than anybody. But you can say, hey, I'm going to learn this and I'm going to get good at it. And I'm going to grow. And and that's what it's all about. And if you do these things, if you don't listen to other people and believe your new voice, believe the voice that tells you, I can do this, you'll do it. And trust me, I'm living proof. All right, sorry, I'll I'll get off my high horse now. Sorry about that. Uh, Over in Clubhouse, I kind of started preaching a little bit. But it, it's fun. Matt, how are you doing? I, I hope you're having a good time in there. Uh, we will be going live on Clubhouse here in just a little bit where I'm going to actually jump in there and talk to people directly, answer questions. You've got Amber, Grayson, and Julie in there. <clears throat> All right. Uh-oh. TV Junkie says, I sound, sound like Jocko Willink. That's pretty funny because I – I almost got to meet him. Uh, a friend of mine did a lot of his video uh, for what he's doing on LinkedIn. Uh, great guy, though. I, I've listened to uh, Extreme Ownership. Uh, man, I love it. All right. Reed Crosby says, how to explain that there is not enough volume to increase pressure? Uh, well, volume and pressure are two different things. And, and I know that I said, like, when you when you have small fittings, your volume is going to be so so low that it, it loses pressure, feels like it. If you have flow restrictions to a shower valve and you open everything else in your house and then you go to open your shower valve, those flow restrictions are going to make your pressure the worst anywhere. So that's kind of what I meant if that's what you're talking about. If not... Sorry. <coughs> Veronique says, is it safe to use chemical drain cleaners for a clogged or dirty pipe? I don't like them. Uh, really like, not at all. Uh, oh, I'm jumping in here and looking at something. Oh, that's Okay. Uh, yeah, Steve, it looks like you got put in time out by the bot, uh, but you're good. So, oh, you were put in time out for five seconds. 
So yeah, you re- you really are good. <clears throat> uh, and I think I actually showed that now. So here, here's the deal: I don't like drain cleaners at all. <clears throat> and here's why: that they can damage the pipes. Uh, it doesn't matter to me what people tell you. Anytime you put chemicals like that in your system, it can damage. It can damage your pipes. Now, if you've got PVC, maybe not nearly as bad. But if you've got old cast iron pipes, it it can. Here's my thing. I would rather see you jump in and figure out why you're getting clogs. Do you have a belly? Do you have a break? Are you putting the wrong things down your drain? So, man, there's a lot of problems there, but I, I would not just jump to a drain cleaner. <sighs> How y'all like my Yeti? My sister made that for me for Christmas. Pretty freaking cool. All right. So I hope I answered that one good for you. Tyler. I believe I already answered this one. I prefer an anti-scale system instead of a water softener. And also water softeners are pretty bad about uh, water softeners are pretty bad about using too much water to regen and stuff like that. So they really waste a lot of water. Says, how far, oh, there's a good one. Antonio Ryan says, says, how far do you travel for a job? What's the longest you've traveled? Now, I'm going to answer this one different ways because I know plumbers in the union that have a travel card and have traveled, you know, 2,000 miles to work in another city for, for a while, meaning they relocated to a big job and it, 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 it's a big deal. Now, my personal thing is I've traveled six or 800 miles to do a, a leak detection job. Uh, I'm, I'm in northeast Texas. I went all the way over to El Paso and then up into New Mexico uh, to do a big leak detection job. So that's probably the furthest I've been. But, you know, that same company has properties all across the United States. And if they called me and said, hey, will you, will you go to California or New York? You know, sure. But they pay me to go. They, they pay drive time. They pay per diem. They pay this. They pay that. But it's because, I mean, my, my, my time is kind of valuable. Jumping back over in the chat for a minute. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Dragon Star says, if chemicals don't work and you call a, a professional, it can burn us. And, and it does. Anytime you use a drain cleaner, if, you, if it ends up not working and you do have to call a plumber or somebody in, please tell them, hey, I've put these drain cleaners in. Now, a lot of them can smell it. A lot of them will notice it. But we've got to get that out before we do it. Or, I mean, man, I've heard of plumbers going blind because they stuck a snake in there and it popped or something and it got in their eyes. So always please tell them that, that those chemicals are in there. Elliot says, hey, Roger, I need plumbing help, please. Um Man, jump into the forum and write your question. That's what we're here for. Ryan says commercial. Steve says residential. Merlin Place says I've been looking into being a plumber's apprentice. I still need to call my local union, but it's been a hard one to find. Uh, we used to have a link somewhere. Actually, if you go into my YouTube videos and, and do the one that I've got one, I think it says how to find out what union you belong in or whatever. There's a link in there, and you can call them and talk to them. Uh, Ryan says I was looking to opt out of the union do my own thing there you go have you ever made a video electric tankless versus electric tank type water heaters I have not uh, and, th- and there are a couple of good electric tankless brands so you're right I need to do that really I live in Hawaii now in Washington, D.C. Man, I, yeah, I wish I lived in Hawaii. Danny Keene, I believe in Muslim plumbers also in D.C. Yeah, there, there's, man, we got a lot of people in D.C. Ori Rogers is in commercial in Boise, Idaho. And <clears throat> all right now, yeah, be careful there, Danny. So here's the deal. 
That's the longest I've ever traveled. And I enjoyed it. Ryan Yashimoto says, how do you sell you and your company over the rest of the competition in your area? Great answer or great question. Here's what I'll tell you. And I believe that we go above and beyond to do things better than any company. And what I mean by that is the, the, the crazy thing is we, we literally, I, I, we use the best equipment. We use the best of materials. I think that we use the best plumbers, meaning we train our plumbers to do everything right every single time they walk in a job. And I don't just mean do it right. I mean do it better than anyone else. And it's really neat because one of the big plumbing companies in my area that, that's big in the service industry in our area, I went by and talked to him one day, and I'm in, I'm in a mentorship program, so I can go by and talk to him. And lucky there, St. Clair Poirier's in the house. How are you doing? She made a comment. I love that. Uh, just so you know, Brother Grayson is, is sitting down here behind the mixing board uh, taking care of things, and, and Grayson is my editor here on YouTube, uh, and he's going to get up and comment probably as me. But St. Clair, good to have you in here. We actually asked about you earlier. I, I know that you get in here often, and I think that's pretty cool. Uh, hey, Grayson, come over here real quick and just say hello. So, so St. Clair, since, since you're in here, and this is kind of a special deal, uh, I'm going to let Grayson come in, and we're on the left camera. Hey, St. Clair, I just wanted to give you a shout-out and say I love you, miss you. So Grayson is my editor. Uh, so those of y'all that like the videos that we do here, uh, I edit all of them. The ones you don't like, he does. Uh, no, not really. He he is literally uh, – Grayson is a phenomenal editor, does great things for me. And he said, look, my sister watches often. And why she watches the live streams, I don't know. Uh, but uh, look here, yeah, everybody knows Sinclair. So anyway – Great to have you in here. I'm, I'm glad you jumped in and said hello. I love that. So, Sinclair, why do you watch a plumbing channel? Uh, I mean, I know the videos for Grayson, but why do you watch the live streams? Just out of curiosity. So, Ryan, back, back to you real quick. The, the, the thing that I think that we do different is we literally try to outperform every other company. And, and we don't just try, we, we do it by knowing how can we do things better? How can we protect the house better? How can we, how can we do so many things? Man, Neil is all over it. Phenomenal. Uh, just time them out quick and then, and, and, and then get deleted and it don't take long, brother. Uh, you know, the, the, the neat thing is, though, we market ourselves through social media. And, and people can see by the things we do, we do it right. And I think that's a big deal. A lot of people don't always see that. A lot of people don't always understand it. You've got to find out how you market that. How do you let people know? And, Neil, sometimes people get flushed. You know, you've got to know, are your guys always doing the right thing? And that goes into hiring for culture, getting the right people in. But if you go in, and I heard it put one day, you know, you've got to go in and sell the job. But then once you sell it, then it's a production. Then it's a, a hey, I'm protecting your floor. I'm cleaning up after myself. I'm wearing a mask. I'm wearing floor savers. I'm doing all these different things to do things right. Because I'm telling you, there's a lot of people out there that aren't doing things right. So it, it really... It really does make a big difference. And once you start doing things to help set your company apart from the others, it's huge. And it will make a, a big deal. Uh, St. Clair says, I'm a new homeowner, and there's so much I'm clueless about and such a proud sister. St. Clair, number one, again, thank you for jumping in here. I do appreciate that. 
Uh, Sinclair, where do you live at? Just out of curiosity. And congratulations on the new home. So, Ryan, I hope that that helped you. Uh, social media is a great way to communicate with customers, doing videos, showing them things that, that you see other plumbing companies do that aren't always on the up and up. So there's a lot of things you can do, a, a lot of things that can help you set yourself apart from them. And, and if you do it consistently, people will see it, and it, it really will be a big deal. I want to say thanks to my moderators real quick. Uh, I know we've got Neil the Urban Explorer, Julie Wakefield, Amber Mendoza. I don't know if Austin and Liz and I think Sean got out. But, man, th these guys, guys, look, if you mess up in here, they will put you in timeout. They will block you down. They will do all kinds of crazy things. But, man, if you're doing crazy stuff, it you're pretty much asking for it. So, anyway. Be careful in here. St. Clair in Orlando. And that's so cool. The first conference uh, I ever got. No, it was in Anaheim. The first, no, the first conference that I went through, went to for SGI was in Orlando. I love it out there. I was actually there in December, too. I went and spoke at a roofing conference. All right. Back over in the forum. Here we go. Ryan says, hey, Roger, I was wondering if there are different plumbing traps to P-traps. Uh, P-traps seem to get clogged often, so are there any better options? And there's really not. You've got to be careful as to what you're putting down the drain. That's why P-traps get clogged. There are whole, whole house running P-traps they use in certain areas, different things like that. And really, it's just a running trap. <clears throat> But, man, it, it, they get clogged because of what people put down the drain. Maybe you need to change it. Maybe you need to do this or this. Uh, now Neil's really getting tough. He is going to take away somebody's Amazon privileges. So y'all better be careful. That's what he did to Grayson. That's why Grayson can't get in here and comment anymore. I'm just telling y'all, don't mess with Neil. The Urban Explorer will be all over you. Uh, oh, sorry, that, that, that was Gustav. Gustav, man, like the, the, there's not a lot of different traps. That, that There are some different ones, but P-traps get clogged because of what people put down them, and, and that's where you got to be really, really careful. Back over in the chat, or I'm sorry, back in the forum, Brock says, Hello, I need some help securing my drain pipe to the bottom of my floor joist. What is the best product you can recommend for stability and keeping slope? I actually like using riser clamps, and you know they make the, the hanger brackets that you can attach right in the joist, screw a rod in it, and it drops down. I like riser clamps because they'll keep it right where it goes. You use one on top and bottom so it can't move up or down. Normally, whenever we do a big repop under a house we'll use like stainless clevis hangers uh stainless rods stainless nuts and washers different things like that to make sure that there's not any problems uh, we don't want it to rot out within just a few years and then have to go back and do it again so you know there's a lot of different things that we can do but we always try to go stainless so we don't have a problem gonna jump back over in the chat for just a little bit <clears throat> One time we had our old commode in the garage and it fell over and broke. As I was picking it up, yeah, sliced my hand like a razor blade. Yeah, you got to be careful. And let me tell you a couple of different ways where I've seen plumbers really have problems. Uh, and I had a great plumber one day was installing a flange. He had chipped the tile. And he reached down and he wiped like this. And it literally cut his glove and cut right through it. And, I mean, gashed his hand. He had to get stitches in the palm of his hand. So you really want to be very careful. Porcelain is like glass. When you cut it, it's sharp. It's a sharp edge. And, man, you are right. It, it can make it tough. So, little P, be careful. 
All right. Ori Rogers says, Roger, have you ever worked with glass pipe, like for old acid waste? I haven't worked with glass. Uh, I've done acid waste, but we use fuse pipe, fuse seal. Uh, never had to do glass, though. Ryan says, thanks, great advice, Roger. Uh, a lot of ideas from you, especially you mentioning Michael Gerber. One of your videos, that guy's a game changer. I'll tell you what, I actually hired him as my first coach, and he is. It's phenomenal. If you can learn to think that way. And, and I mean, I want you all to think about this. If you're in the trades, whether you're an apprentice, matter of fact, it doesn't matter if you're in the trades. If you are in a position where you're either trying to get a, a job in a new career, you're trying to grow, you're trying to own your own business, whatever it is, the e-myth is great. You've got to learn how do I come in and do this? How do I scale it? How do I grow it? Michael Gerber taught me so much about what to do, but then I had to learn how to do it. So, man, he's been phenomenal for me. And if you will learn to look at it and think about it, man, you, you will grow so much because you start looking at things from a completely different way. And it really does help. Liam says, hello from New Zealand. I uh, love your videos, and they're always very factual. And I, I try to be. I try to be honest and sincere in everything I do. I think because I put up the Shaka some Yeah, <clears throat> Hawaiian's version of the peace sign. Brother, I get it. Joe Mathis, I don't get flushed. I do the flushing. Man, absolutely. I, I like that. Good attitude to have. Anthony Holmes says, what's your absolute worst job you've ever worked? Like you thought about quitting type of job? Uh, man, I, before I started my own company, I was director of operations for a large mechanical contractor. And every single thing the owner did was about money. Nothing was done because it's right. Nothing was done for education. Nothing was done. They were literally making stuff up to make it sound like they were doing things right. And I just, that, man, that's not the kind of company I wanted to work for. So I left. Looking over here. We are still over in Clubhouse, and I'm going to jump in there in about 25 minutes. And looks like I'm going to talk to Matt. We're going to jump in over there, though, and visit and ask and answer questions and, and see what we can do for people. So if you are in Clubhouse, Go find Roger Wakefield or go look at Plumbing Online direct from YouTube with Q&A afterwards. Love to see y'all there. <clears throat> okay, so back over in here. Uh, now, that, that's the worst job ever, I mean, and I did quit. I decided that's not the kind of company or people that I wanted to work for. So, man, it, we, we found a way to get me out, and we did. Dragon... Ugh. Dragon Slayer says not bot. I can't figure out how to post in subreddit, but you joined. And man, I'm not sure. You you may have to may have to just go in there and put a comment and ask people. I know you can message me direct in there. If you'll do that, we'll look at it tomorrow and see what we can do for you. But Dragon Slayer, I do appreciate you going in there and joining. Guys on subreddit is is where we go in and we get a lot of videos from people, a lot of pictures from people. If you're a plumber or even not, <clears throat> what I tell you is go over to the subreddit, Roger Wakefield posts, any pictures or videos you've got good or bad or whatever, uh, please go over there, post them, share them. And man, we'll comment, people will comment about them. We'll bring them in. We'll go in here and put them in our videos. And that's where we get a lot of good stuff and have a lot of fun. So thank you so much. <clears throat> Brock, you are welcome. If that was to me, if not, you're welcome from somebody else. Lazy Boy Gaming says, hey, big fan of your videos. Also, I was wondering if you have any experience or history story with plumbing in the cold winter. I live in South Dakota. You know what, man? I, my question is, why would you live in South Dakota? Uh, if it gets negative 60, my butt would be gone. Uh, and... and Man, I've always wondered that. Why would people live when it's that cold? But I guess growing up, you're just used to it. But people always ask me, man, how do you handle it when it's 110 degrees? You know what? It's hot, but man, I don't know. I just, 
I can handle it. But I'm telling you, I, I have a hard time handling zero. Matter of fact, I have a hard time handling 30 degrees here. So how you do negative 60, brother, man, I have no idea. <clears throat> Ori Rogers says, do you guys crawl houses? If you mean crawl under houses, absolutely. Uh, Pyramid beams, we get under, under them all the time as part of it. Dragon Slayer, okay, I'll try again. I joined, maybe I didn't sign in. And good luck. Anything we can do to help you, let me know. Uh, I like that. Carlos Flores says Ferguson's the best. Word. I tell you what, they, they've been great for us to work with. We've worked with them ever since not long after I started the company. And, and I got to tell you, it's, man, it's been wonderful. And now we're literally, that, that's where we order, you know, right there. That's where we order our supplies. I mean, they've got it set up where it's so easy to do it. And it just, it literally does make sense. All right. Malik the wild man says, would love to see a plumbing jargon video. Everyone knows what a PP or porcelain planner is, uh, but how many people have seen a water closet, water rocket? You know, man, you can see all kinds of crazy things. Michael Gerber's phenomenal. Uh, saw a guy walk past a broken water closet and cut his calf to the bone. Man, it can happen. I'm telling y'all, water closets, lavatory sinks that are broken, towel, man, be careful. Or he says, I have used that stuff also to mechanical joint Zern products. You seen, I love that. Hi, Roger, from across the pond in the UK. I'm a plumber by trade, but now recently qualified gas engineer. Loving the problem solving. What's your thoughts on the gas side of plumbing? I, I got to tell you, Tommy, I love it. <clears throat> Here in the United States, or, or at least here in Texas, plumbers work on gas, meaning natural gas falls under us. It it's, falls under our license. We work on it. We test it. We get it inspected. Uh, I mean, we install it. We, we do all the above. So I love it. Jamie Charmon is in Wales. Caleb Grimm, how do you feel about Joe Biden? We're, we're not talking politics in here. Uh, he, he gets his chance starting Wednesday. Tommy Martin says, oh, and when I said plumber, I meant commercial plumber. Love the steel splinters. Ooh, yeah. And I've done that before. It hurts, too. Uh, Dragon Slayer, any way to win a hoodie? No, we're not giving away merch, anything like that. And I'm a cheapskate, too, so I get it. But I appreciate it. Caleb, and you notice I don't even have one. So that, that's how I know that. Uh, Caleb Caldwell says, what kind of math do you need to know for plumbing? I have a test coming up shortly for my local plumbers union, and I wasn't given a clear outline on what's on it. You know, Caleb, and that's a good question. The, the thing that I would think, know how to read a tape measure, know how to add fractions, maybe know how to convert decimals to fractions and how to add, or I don't think you, you would get into multiplying or dividing or anything like that. If you're pretty good at math, you may want to, you may want to look at it and check and say, hey, look, if I wanted to divide it or do this or do that. But normally it's just, it's pretty simple math. <clears throat> Dragon Slayer says, I'll figure, I'll figure it out. Uh, close this out. When I try to figure it out, I'll go over it. There you go. Steve says, Roger and Julie, you guys are awesome. Thank you for answering my question. Help me out a lot. I have to go. Have a wonderful day. Much love and aloha. Steve. Brother, man, we're always here. Come, come back every Monday, 3 to 5.30. We, we do this every week, and we have fun. Saltine Cracker says, when you live up north, you have to use equipment to dig in the middle of the winter. Snow removal becomes a daily chore. It's a hard life. Man, I believe it. Uh, are you serious? I like that. Hey, uh, greetings from fans from Croatia. Man, glad to have you here. <clears throat> Editor Grayson taking care of things there. I love it. Uh, Neil took away his posting rights, so he's got to log in as me. It's tough. Uh, I, I know. 
South Dakota exactly why. Uh, and, and look, man, I don't mean anything bad by it. I just, I could not handle the cold like that. Pizza Yes Studio says, when did you start plumbing? I started in 1980. It's been a long time ago. I've still got just a couple of more questions to get to in the forum. If y'all want to jump over there, if you have any more questions before we get out of here, I'm just kind of going through saying hello in the chat. I'm fixing to jump back over in the form and, and get some stuff done. Nicholas Hoffman says, yeah, you need to know some basic differential equations. You know, offset multipliers for like a 45 degree offset is 1.41. <coughs> you can probably get on Google and, and Google plumbing math. What do I need to know? Stuff like that. It'll help you out a lot. All right, so I am going to jump over in the chat. Got a few more questions here. TJ. TJ says, do you do any training to help people become apprentices, plumbers, journeyman and company owners. And, and look, we talked about this earlier, TJ. Uh, I, I, I do. We're working on digital courses. We're actually working on uh, a monthly live Zoom where, you know, once a month I jump into a Zoom, I go live, and, and, and basically I teach people. So it would be a different group each week. Like the, the, the first week w would be apprentices. Uh, I do apprentices. I do journeymen. I do people starting a company and people wanting to learn social media to grow a business. So not really the way you've got it written down, but kind of close. Anybody in here, tell me, is that something you'd be interested in? If I went live on a Zoom, so you'd see me, I'd see you. You've got a microphone. I've got a microphone. I, I teach for a little bit. And then we talk back and forth. You ask me questions. I answer them. We learn from other people. We do things like that. <clears throat> is this anything that you would be interested in? Because th this is something I I've got to work on, something we've been working on, and, and we want to do. So, TJ, number one, it it's a great question. Uh, it's something I've had people ask us about before. I've never done it, but we are trying to get – set up to where we can do it. So if there is anybody in here that would be interested in that, please just leave a hashtag yes down there and let me know. Uh, all right. So that was TJ. Sorry. I thought that. Okay. Next one. Jalmika says, how do you grow a Mustang like that? Well, it's my mustache. Okay. <clears throat> You know, here, here's the deal. It, it's just like anything else in life. You got to decide this is what I want to do. Uh, I started my growing my mustache. The good or cool thing is, at the age of 15, I could literally grow a beard. Now, it probably wasn't as thick as this, but I mean, it was enough of a beard that I had a beard. And I've just, I've always loved having facial hair. <clears throat> and the, the cool thing about it is it, it, it works. Uh, the, the, the really neat thing about it is, uh, I've just kind of let it grow in, until it got to something that I wanted and liked. So I guess that's a tough way to do it. Uh, how do you do it? Man, man, like I said, I'm lucky. Uh, facial hair has always been easy for me. So the, the fact that I can do it, <clears throat> uh, I, I guess I'm just blessed. So. Like I said, I, I love that I've always been able to grow facial hair. And, I, and I'll tell you a funny story. Uh, <clears throat> Jalimica, I remember when I was a kid, we had a swimming pool, and I dove off the diving board, and I was trying. We used to literally run and jump on the board and try to dive to the other end. And, man, I hit it right one day, and I flew to the other end. But the problem is, I mean, I almost blacked out underwater. My head hit where the pool comes up, and I gashed 
not gashed, really just scraped off all the skin on my lip right there. And the first thing that went through my mind is, oh my gosh, I'm not going to be able to grow a mustache. And I know that's funny, but that really is the thought that went through my mind. Uh, kind of tough. Number one, I want to welcome the Dragon Slayer. Welcome to the Tuber Turds. Good to have you here. Uh, we're working on changing a lot of things that we do for members. So, uh, uh, number one, I'm glad you're in there. I think we've got about 50 members right now. Uh, pretty cool deal, but I, I'm glad that you did. It, it's neat. Okay, so Joe Mathis says, high rise, head pressure, gain or loss. Well, if you're asking or if you're telling him for the questions, the higher up you go, the more pressure you lose. <clears throat> what is it, 0. 0.431 pounds every 10 feet? Pretty close. Good to have Dragon Slayer as a member. I love that. Susie Valentin Rulers in the house is, I think it would be something that would work for your channel, Roger. I signed up for Brian G. Johnson's class, and we meet on Zoom monthly or so. I think many would like it. Susie, that's fantastic. And look, Brian G. Johnson is a great YouTube guy. He gets it. Yeah, we got Neil in the house saying hello to you already. And Dragon Slayer, you are not just a turd. You are a tuber turd. Congratulations. <clears throat> Red Dot says, thank you. I'm 23, live in Southern California. Just bought a house in your videos. Help me out a lot. Good. I love that. Charles Cunningham, fourth year apprentice here. Finish your written test. Okay, so Charles, if you just finish your written test, okay, but you're a fourth year. All right. Early February, you get to take your practical. Good for you. Where are you located at? Uh, thanks for all your tips, man. You're an awesome dude, an amazing teacher. I used to teach in the union, so, man, I get it. I love it. I love teaching people. You know, the, the, the reason that we're start, starting to do this monthly live that we're talking about doing is I've had so many people ask me, look, Roger, I wish you would do a course where I could talk to you. And, and it's hard to just get in here in the chat and ask one question every now and then. So we decided that what we would do, and, and this is for all y'all that said you might be interested, we have decided, and, and like I said, we're doing it for like four different levels. We're doing a... I want to get into the trades or I'm an apprentice. I'm a journeyman, but I want to be better. I want to grow. I want to be best. Uh, I want to start my own company or I've already got my own company and I want to learn how to use social media to grow. So so that's the four different we're looking at. So like maybe apprentices would be Monday night. I mean, the first week, <clears throat> not Monday because I do this. But apprentices may be the, the first Tuesday or Wednesday. The second Tuesday or Wednesday may be tradespeople that, that want to become better journeymen, better skilled. Uh, the third one may be, or the third week of the month, would probably be tradespeople that want to open their own company. What things do they need to know? How do they need to know it? What order do they need to do it in? <clears throat> and then the, the last week of the month would be the, the business company owners that want to learn to use social media to grow their business and make their phone ring. And that's why we're looking at it that way. So Susie, I appreciate that. Uh, that's pretty neat. <clears throat> All right, I answered this one here. Next we've got Sydney Wants. As a service plumber, how much should my goal be in revenue each month? I just started open shop over half a year now and hoping to be in a van soon. You know, Sydney, this is, this is really a wonderful question because this is something that we look at a lot and, and we look at it and, and, and I mean, we, we've all got to have analytics. We've got to have KPIs. We've got to have numbers we look at. Here's what I would tell you to be a really, really good plumber to put yourself on the higher end of the scale, I would say you probably need to do about two grand a day. And then I'm going to come back and say, but wait a minute, a lot of that depends on what your company charges, what your efficiency rate is, meaning, you know, most companies like in Dallas, we've got a lot of driving. We've got a big part of town to cover. So it's really hard <clears throat> to have a plumber work six or eight hours a day ticket time. 
it's more like four hours a day. But we're doing things to increase that and make that better. We're trying to increase their efficiency, then it helps them, which in turn helps us. So we're looking at it both ways. But if you can hit somewhere between $1,800 and $2,000 a day as a plumber, you're doing really good. Uh, our plumbers should be hitting about $350,000 a year per van. And th those are really close numbers. But you got to remember, too, those numbers should increase about 10% each year because their efficiency should increase. That has nothing to do with price increase, just their efficiency. The better they get, the more they should do. And, and it does. It pays off in the long run. So I hope that that helps you. Uh, Sydney, man, I hope you subscribe, hang around, stick around, become a member, whatever it takes. Uh, love to see you in here and, and just kind of keep up with you and see how it goes. Brock says, what is the max slope you recommend on three inch drain pipe? What should I not exceed? Uh, well, you can't exceed, uh, got three inches on a quarter of an inch per foot. Uh, you can't exceed that because over 12 feet coming off a trap, you'll start losing it. There, there's quarter inch to an eighth of an inch. Quarter inch is normally the max fall you want. Eighth of an inch is probably normal, and, and that's about where I'd stay. Uh, eighth of an inch to a quarter inch, but also look at the code in your area and see what's required and, because you don't want me messing you up just because your code required something a little bit different. Uh, got just a couple more questions here. I want to get through. <clears throat> Marco says, when did you start plumbing? Marco, I started in 1980. I was literally a, a, a manager in a restaurant place, a hamburger joint. The, the big thing about it is that it, it was fun, but my buddy working there asked me one night, says, what are you going to do if you get fired or quit? And I thought, dude, I ain't got to worry about that. I'm, I'm 16 years old. I'm managing a restaurant. He said, so tell me this, who would hire a 16-year-old restaurant manager? And that literally blew me away. Uh, once he put it that way, I got to thinking about it. It was a couple of weeks later that I'd quit or got fired, probably fired. One of his brothers helped me get a job, and it was great. So, I, you know, I, I want to comment a little bit. Everybody who's over in Clubhouse, I want to say thank you to you. I appreciate all y'all being here. Uh, we're going to jump over here in just a minute. Matt, Neil, uh, talk with y'all, answer questions. And we've got Grace and Liz, Julie and Amber over there too. Uh, I'm going to jump in there and ask her, ask some questions or answer some questions. So, you know, the, the neat thing about it is, I know, Marcus, I am really old. You know, and, and, and that's the funny thing is, guys, look, I, I'm almost 57. I can still plumb. I can still do social media. I still have fun every day. And Ed, I don't know why Canada doesn't have master plumbers. Do they have general contractors that run plumbing companies or how are they set up? You know, the, the neat thing about it is number one, I love what we do. I love the trades. I love plumbing. Uh, I love the opportunity to get in here and talk to all y'all about the trades, about getting into the trades, how to get in, how to get better how to open your own company, how to use the power of social media to grow your business and, and do things really, really well. Uh, I, I love the fact that, that, that people get in and ask me questions and, and they want to learn. But I think that my life is wonderful because I really get to help people. And it, it doesn't matter it, it doesn't matter if it's just by plumbing or teaching them how to do their plumbing. There's a lot of people out there that need that. So I think that what we get to do is amazing. And the people that I get to do it for, people ask me all the time, what, what excites you the most about what you do? And it's when I walk up and I see that other plumbers have done people wrong and we have the opportunity to fix that. Now, I feel bad that other plumbers have done them wrong. But at the end of the day, man, 
I now have an opportunity. I now have an opportunity to make it right. And that really is a big deal, to, do, big deal with me. <clears throat> so those of y'all in Clubhouse, I will be over to see you here in just a moment. And I know that huh, it's okay, Neil. I know I'm old. <clears throat> You know, the, the cool thing is, yeah, and I am still a hit with the ladies, at least one of them. Uh, Glenn says, Roger, I'm a contractor in New Jersey about to engage in and buy fix and flips. Do you have any advice on how to move forward? Yeah, num number one, find people that are already doing it that you can learn from. <clears throat> it was really neat. Uh, I was in a clubhouse room the other night with Grant Cardone, and he's talking about how he does it. And I got to tell you, it's man, he, he's a smart guy. He's making money. But there, there's a lot of different things that you can learn and do to help you grow. But the thing is, and, and go back and read the book, The Richest Man in Babylon. Don't just invest in things. Invest in people that know those things. It would be really easy for me to just drive down the road and see an electrical company and say, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy that electrical company and help them grow. I don't know if they're doing things right, wrong, but it's electrical, so I may not know anyway. But if I wanted to invest in an electrical company, I know the people to contact and get some information. If I want to invest in real estate, I know the people to contact to help me get more information. So that's kind of what I'd tell you is find somebody that's already doing flips, work with them. Even if you need to work with them free for a year to learn, learn who the good crews are, learn the right things to do. But... <clears throat> I, I got to tell you one thing is, is, man, always do the right thing for the customer. Never try to sell them a house that has a leak under it, uh, a slab leak, uh, anything like that. And, and another big trick that I can tell you, get in there and learn what problems the house does have. That way you can address it either before you buy it or after you buy it, but then you're selling people a good product. And to me, that's a really big deal. Uh there are a lot of union jobs in America, uh, America and Canada both, uh, and it's the same union. It's the United Association. So <clears throat> if you want to own your own company, uh, I probably wouldn't join the union unless you want to just join it to learn plumbing and then get out. But that's kind of my thoughts. So, guys, I'm fixing to jump over in Clubhouse for just a little bit. I really do appreciate everybody being here today, and I want to say thank you to all all of y'all for jumping in here. I love the questions. I, I appreciate it that some of y'all say you would like getting in on that monthly deal. Uh, it's something that as we start putting it together, we'll talk about it in here. But I, I hope that it's something that you know people do enjoy and, and find value in. What we're looking at finding a way that we can set it up and, and make it where people can literally get in and learn and it's going to help them get better at the things that they want to get better at. <clears throat> so <laughs> Susie says, overestimate all repairs just in case. Man, you're right there. Uh, and I won't sell them for your craftsmanship. Good for you. Well, good. Well, guys, I want to say, number one, thank you for so much. I really do appreciate y'all being here. Uh, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to jump over in Clubhouse for just a little bit, see how everybody's doing over there, see if I can answer any questions for them. And that I'm going to call it a day. So anyway, thank you for being here. I really do appreciate it. If you learned something today, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe to the channel, ring the bell. That way you don't miss out on anything. I'm Roger Wakefield. Yep. Dragon Slayer. It's over. Again, I want to say thank you to the Urban Explorer. If you hadn't subscribed to his channel, do. If you hadn't subscribed to Susie Valentin, the realtor, go over and check her channel out. She's doing great things too. Uh, Neil, thank you very much. Amber, all y'all. Julie, Grayson, Liz, Austin, thank you for all your help. Uh, it's been wonderful. And yes, Neil, I will see you soon. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you in the next video if you don't get flushed. <laughs>